I know. You want to make money online, right? But it's frustrating. There's so many ways to do it, and so many people out there lying to you. And it's true. Because remember, there's a lot of money to be made in making people think they can make money. It's the oldest trick in the book, right? That's how it works. Everybody, Craig Chamberlain here with IT Life. And hey, the phones are ringing here at Precision Electric. I'm going to let that ring ring. Because we're going to talk about today monetization and CPM because a patron asked me a specific question. IT Life is where you guys get valuable insights into the world of IT. I've, wow, someone should really answer that. <laughs> Valuable insight into the real world of IT where I sit here and give you guys down to earth answers to your questions if you're patrons. No one, please. And so if you, uh, if you have any questions as a patron, you get to ask one. Speaking of patrons, um, I did get one today, and it was related to CPM and making money online, and that's why I'm making this video. And uh, and I'm pretty excited about putting this one together because I've I've been doing this for a long time, online sales, and there's so many people out there lying to you. So if you're not yet a patron, check out the patrons. Patrons get exclusive in, uh, exclusive access to me to ask me questions and get valuable insights to their business or consultation or maybe just computer problems. Uh, and check that out in the link below because the patrons keep this show going. They do. They keep it going. And uh, we're near the goal. We're near the first goal. Very excited uh, about that. And speaking of being excited. Jacob Williams was the person who posted this question, and I'm not going to read the specifics because he's collecting data, and I'm assuming that, you know, just out of respect for him and what he's trying to pursue, I didn't want to give his numbers publicly, um, but he was talking about CPM. He makes videos online on YouTube, and CPM is how much money you make per thousand views on a video. Uh, the tutorials he's making are making a, a good amount of money, I would actually agree. Um, it's, it's in the uh, it's in the $15 to $25 range. Um, he thinks 88% of users are watching them on desktop. He thinks that's why the revenue is doing well, which is higher than average. Desktop ads make more because they're more likely to make purchases from their computer than their smartphone. Uh, second, I believe that 30% for most of his viewers are between the ages of uh, 45 and 54, so the expendable money. He's basically saying that, is my CPM higher because of my demographic and the hardware that they're using. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know how the CPM works, it's essentially it's this. Based on the demand of your content and the people watching it, uh, certain advertisements show up on your videos. And those advertisements have a certain amount of money they make per thousand views. Uh, I personally think that the AdSense uh, the AdSense system is broken in a respect for uh, creative people. I don't think it works for creative people. Um, but I think it works exceptionally well for niche people. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and he said that with he, when he was doing a podcast, which, which was on YouTube, a video podcast, uh, which essentially was just audio-based, it actually made more money than his video-based tutorials. And he was wondering if that was because people would just put it on in the background uh, and they wouldn't be able to skip the ads. Uh, and so it's it's really, he's got a couple questions here. Making money online, let's just break this down, okay? Making money online, there's no quick way to do it unless you're ripping people off um, or exploiting people. Uh, but essentially there's only a number of ways to do it. Uh, you can go the AdSense route, which means you're going to essentially... Uh, build a website or content or a YouTube channel and content and you're going to draw in viewers or visitors and you're going to hope that they click on those ads or watch those ads and then, then you will get a percentage of revenue, usually I think it's half and half of that ad view. Okay, That's the AdSense monetization platform. Uh, the second option is to do, uh, there's more than two options, but the second option is typically to do affiliate marketing, which means you get behind a product or service and you post links out there and people click on them and if they purchase a product you get a percentage of commission. The third option you have out there is to do something similar to uh, what a lot of people are doing out there. They build a product or service, they write a book or they write uh, or they create a video a specific video about uh, their IT light or their IT skills, or they create, a, a, they offer a service such as IT tech repair, and they put themselves out there and they continue to build their authority so that people will come to them for help. Very similar to my business model. Uh, and then they charge them an hourly rate for their skill. 
Um, or there's the fourth route, which I'm doing now, is the Patreon program, uh, where I'm building a community of people, uh, and, and the show itself, or the support itself, is funded by uh, the community. So it's crowdfunded. Uh, now, the diff there's advantages and disadvantages to all of them. Uh, AdSense, unfortunately, the major disadvantage of AdSense is that the algorithm by which you're paid, which Jacob Williams is running into, is completely mysterious. Uh, and it can change on a daily basis. So you don't have any secure funds with this AdSense program. Um, and, and what might work one month or with one product might not work the next month, or it's affected by the, the people investing the money into advertising. And so if somebody, if January does less than March, uh, you're going to get hit a lot harder uh, in January for your revenue. So it makes it very difficult to make business decisions. Uh, and expansion decisions. Um, now, when he's talking about CPM, essentially what they do is, is there's a pool, okay, a pool of advertisers. Uh, let's say you got the Intel and Toyota and all of them, and they've all got their money poured into into YouTube advertising, okay. This pool of advertisers says, okay, I want my ad to show up for people interested in these subjects. Now, I'm willing to pay. $10, $20, $30 per thousand views if they are between the ages of this, um, if they are uh, using this type of device, uh, if they are um, if they are watching other videos related to these topics, uh, you know, and so they can kind of go down the list because that's the nice thing about the internet is they can track what you like and what you don't like and then they can target advertising based on that. Obviously the more focused that becomes uh, the more valuable it is to the advertiser. So if I was Ford and I was making an advertising campaign and I said, I'm going to invest, uh, I'll give $5 per, I'm going to invest $10,000. Would I want that money to be at people who are between the ages, the buying people, between the ages of 30 and 50, have money, are watching videos related to cars, uh, who are, they fit my demographic perfectly? Am I going to pay more for those views? than p people who are watching Minecraft videos who are between the ages of 14 to 16? Of course. You know, I'm going to pay more money to reach my demographic. And so that's how the pooling works, right? So advertisers, they all fit into the specific pool, but based on certain criteria, it, the pool funnels down. It becomes smaller and smaller. And as the pool becomes more specific and the demographic becomes more niche, the value of that pool goes up. So as you can see, as a content creator, things change dramatically when you tighten up your pool. So when you, and how do you do that? How do you become that bottom part that's the most rewarding uh, financially for people? And Jacob, I think this is less about who's watching your ads and who's clicking on them, and it's more about you reaching and gaining the attention of a more niche pool of people. Uh, and, and those people, yeah, they might watch the ads more, they might watch from desktops more, and that might be some of the criteria in which you're reaching them. But the truth is, is that it has very little to do with the superficial criteria you've set on it. it like you were saying, was it because they're using a desktop? Maybe. Uh, and that's the mysterious of, mysterious part of, of the AdSense algorithm, is, is you don't know. We don't know. I couldn't tell you that for the life of me. Um, but the truth is, is I know for a fact, based on all the content creators I've just talked to, everybody else who's in this business, is if your topic is general, generalized, and broad, you are going to make a lot less money per thousand views than if you're very specific in niche. But here's the catch. If you're very specific in niche, usually you don't get as many views as the people who are broad. So sometimes it balances out for people, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but if you're in, in the market of AdSense, usually you want to have a specific niche or focus with laser precision. Um, and that will help eliminate uh, a lot of those issues. Now, I could talk about this for a long time. Um, and, and I wanted to do this video specifically on CPM uh, because uh, in AdSense. Because uh, realistically, we've talked about the other options you can do for monetization. A lot to be said about them. Uh, but I've, I've really grown to hate AdSense because of the lack of security, the lack of stability, and uh, being so heavily dependent on... My content has to be focused on the algorithm, so I can't create content for my community, which is why I like Patreon. 
I had to create content for the algorithm, and if I continued to make content for the algorithm, then I would have never had a reason to make this video for you, Jacob. I mean, realistically, I don't think that there's a lot of money to do a one-off video like this. I would have to focus on monetization every single video that I do and build authority around that topic and really focus on getting that audience engaged regularly and religiously, uh, and that's how you drive up your CPM. That's basically how it works. So um, he asked me uh, on another thing, he goes, how would you imagine a tech channel that's geared towards the right brain? The right brain, of course, is the more intuitive, creative brain. Um, it would be interesting. I'd like to see something uh, for tech help that would be, when you say right brain, would be creative, much more creative and intuitive and, and applied knowledge. Because it's great to be logical and analytical, which is left brain. But I was actually, I said this to my uh, my father yesterday. I said, well, that's the difference between acquired knowledge and applied knowledge. Uh, a lot of the left-brainers don't know how to apply knowledge. A lot of the right-brainers do. As with anything, it's all a balance. You know, um, you can acquire knowledge all day long, but if you can't apply the knowledge, it doesn't do you much good. College kids are learning that more and more as they graduate with all this debt and not having any idea how to apply their knowledge to their field. But guess what businesses want, guys? They want you to be able to apply your knowledge, not acquire it. They don't care what you know. They care what you're capable of doing. Thank you guys for coming up to IT Life today. Uh, more exciting videos coming up ahead. Remember, become a patron. You can ask awesome, question, awesome questions like Jacob, and I'll give you guys some great attention to it because the patrons keep the show going. Now I've got to get back to work because somebody's probably mad at me for not answering that phone. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>